Johnston here, managing broker, co-owner of GoDominicanLife.com and LasTarenasLife.com. Right here in sunny Las Tarenas, Dominican Republic in the province of Samana. Welcome to 2.0 University. This is our series that we're going to have to give you some more information and more in-depth and more analytical thinking about the advantages and disadvantages of living your life abroad here in the Dominican Republic as compared to North America. So I think that's very important for you to get a broader, bigger picture idea of what the costs are associated with everything. It's funny, we were talking about this today, Stephen and I, my business partner, and, uh, just with the stats and statistics and costs with our staff today, and it was funny for them to hear what we pay in North America versus what is paying, paid out here for everyday expenses. Uh, etc. So we're going to take a whole bunch of things, put it all into about two or three or four videos, and I want you to see the differences in life at the beach. So are you ready? Okay, so I made this very simple chart. It's a comparable chart. We're going to talk about the average home prices. We're going to talk about the average mortgage or home debt for mortgages. We're going to talk about the average consumer debt and the average rent price and utilities when you look at all things here in the Dominican Republic versus USA and Canada. So are you ready to be shocked? <laughs> so here we are. Okay, so I left Canada in 2015 and in the 2015 the average price across the country was around $450,000 for a home. But today we are sitting at $713,000 Canadian in 2021 for home prices, average. Now you may say, well, I'm not average. I get that, I'm not average either. However, if this is average, that means there's a, a hell of a lot more and a hell of a lot less, but the everyday price of a home is $713,000. Uh, when I was trading in real estate in Canada for 20 years in Nova Scotia in Halifax, when I finished selling in 2014 and retired, we were sitting around $256,000 for an average home price. So I left my house in Nova Scotia in 2015 and my house was $745,000 appraised. Uh, you know, I'm now divorced, but I'm on friendly terms, of course, with my ex-wife. So I did a market analysis when I was up there with a f good friend of mine who still trades in real estate. And now that same property is worth 1.3, 1.4 million. It makes zero sense uh, to me. However, it does for her and I'm cool with that. But we're going to paint a bigger picture so that you can really get a grip of what I'm trying to get to you. Okay. Look, USA, what do you think the average price in the US market is? Any idea? Any want to guess? Come on, come on. Well, unless you live in Los Angeles, New York, Boston, Miami, etc., $507,000 American. You can see that roughly $700,000 Canadian is roughly $500,000 US, but that's true. And that's the average price. Here in DR, it ranges, but an average is anywhere between 200 to 275,000 US dollars for a house or a condo. It, again, it depends on location, beachfront, etc. But if we look at average, so this obviously won't be beachfront, oceanfront, seven bedrooms, 10 bathrooms. However, that's where we're sitting at right now. The average home debt is incredibly strange too. The average home debt in Canada is sitting around $355,000 Canadian in home debt. In the US, we're sitting at $220,000, okay? But you can see what's happening here in the last couple of years, because of the pandemic, uh, these prices were probably sitting around at 85 or 90% market value. 
of, of loan to value, but the market has went crazy. Now, the market is starting to hedge down in Canada. Well, that's a down arrow. Wow. Okay. It's down about one, one and a half to two percent so far. Nothing major considering the massive gain that has happened. And the U.S. market will start to trend down uh, shortly as well. And mainly because of interest rates that are starting to climb back up, but to a very reasonable interest rate when you look at the broader sense of how the market has been for the last 20 years. You know, the interest rates will go into later, but I'm really serious when I'm saying to you, at a 1.2 to 1.6% interest rate anywhere in the world, it's very unrealistic. And many people have put themselves in trouble to get to the point that they're betting on their value going up and the interest rates continuing to be low. So you have to be uh, careful to make that similar in your mindset to say you can't look at life like that. Now, the DR in terms of home debt, generally speaking, is zero. And you say, why can that and how is that possible? Because the majority of uh, home ownership in resort or beach towns from expats are taking equity out of their properties in North America and paying cash or paying full money down here in the DR. And we're, that is going to change as well. We've introduced mortgages and lending. Uh, Dominican banks do offer mortgage and lending, but at higher pricing that we're used to in North America. But it's coming. It will come. And that will change the value of assets in the DR. Can you imagine if you can get an interest rate like Canada the US at a lending rate of 75 to 95% financing here in the DR, properties would go extremely high. But currently, they're fair, pretty conservative relative to North America, and that's mainly because of the lending that does not exist here as the standard. The scariest part, though, is what the, the fake life that North Americans have built themselves to be uh, compared to the reality of the marketplace. Consumer home debt, what I call stupid debt. That is your credit cards, your unsecured line of credits, your credit cards for like Walmart or what formerly known as Sears and uh, all the other credit cards from different uh, sub subprime companies. Canadian debt in that per family household is sitting around $75,000 Canadian. But it's worse in the States. They're sitting at around 90,000 US dollars in the States. And why is that negative? Well, because the, you're propping yourself up to keep up with the Joneses with cars and car loans and, again, basic unsecured credit cards, unsecured lines of credit to float your lifestyle. But the critical mass is going to make a huge difference when the interest rates continue to rise and you have cannot service that debt. So the combination here is the scary part. 355000 in home debt, another seventy five or so 425000 so roughly, versus a $713,000 uh, value of property. Uh, in the U.S., it's about sitting around 6, 60 to 70%, 65% financing altogether. And the average consumer debt in the DR is very little because bank lending in this country for, well, expats or Dominicans is literally non-existent in the broad sense. You know, like when you come out of university or college in the United States or Canada, you can get, a, you can get anybody to give you a credit card with a $500 to $1,000 limit right away, but that doesn't exist here in the Dominican. So people are living realistically on the money that they raise by way of their working, ment uh, working space or effort and then they buy or rent accordingly. Now, when it comes to rent, here's another thing that's interesting. Rent in Canada uh, is averaging now at around $1,750 Canadian uh, per month, plus utilities. Now, that is up dramatically 20 to 30% in the last year and a half. Why? Because the tightening of the market uh, the increases that people have been using for heating costs, etc. If you're in a, a utility building that the, the landlord pays. And the last one, which is worse, is $1,900 US dollars in the United States on average. Now, again, if you're talking New York City or Miami, that's uh, probably 19000 But you get what I'm saying, right? 
But here in the DR, you can rent properties from, for expats, anywhere between 400, look at that, 400 to $1,700. It just depends what you're looking for. So 400, uh, what? to $1,700. So where am I getting at with this? Part one of this series is really to have a be honest with you, but to say what can you afford and what you should do to consider reevaluating your life from a 1.0 lifestyle to a 2.0 lifestyle. In North America, in this range, we're sitting on high property value with relatively lower debt. So I'm going to show you over time how to create leverage that will allow you to get from one stage to another, borrowing good debt by acquiring an asset that produces US dollar income and allows you to have two assets that are then gaining in value rather than one. So hedging your risk to gain more. So I'm Patrick Johnston. We're going to cover more in a little bit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can WhatsApp me at 829-525-1782. Let's talk. Let's talk real estate. Bye for now.